Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I just want to take a second to thank Jesus. Um, this is special, and I never, ever take this for granted. You know, um, anytime um, you get to talk about the one who's the center of your life, it's special. Um, and it, it can't happen outside the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. And so I just want to take a minute to thank Jesus just for this moment. I want to thank him just for being in our midst uh, here tonight and just Holy Spirit. Uh, I want to glorify the Son tonight, and so I want to put a smile on your face, Lord. That's my goal. And so, Lord, I just love you so much, Lord, and just so thankful to be here. And Brian, I just want to thank you, man. Um, I think you guys know um, uh, when you're over a house, you have to be protective uh, over this. And so the fact that uh, he would even have me here is, is an honor in its own right. And so I saw Allie. There's my girl. Hey, Allie. Uh, me and Allie go way back, too. She's a Tarpon Springs girl. Um, but anyway, yes, Brian reached out and uh, asked if I would uh, talk about, you know, uh, what it's like to, to be. Hey, <laughs> OK, I'm seeing all kinds of faces. I'm going to get to it, I promise. Is there anybody else I know so I can knock it out now? OK. Um, he wanted me to speak about, you know, uh, being in the marketplace, but at the same time, uh, upholding the standards of the gospel and um, uh, not giving way to compromise, you know, uh, because a lot of times uh, people think that to, to get ahead, you just got to compromise a bit, man, and, and God will understand I had to do it, and ultimately it's going to come back to his kingdom, but that's just not how it works. Um, you know, number one, there's no honor in that, and number two, well, God just can't put his hand on something that is contrary to his gospel, right? Because it'd make him a liar and he's not a liar. And so, and we don't want to serve a God like that, right? And so, um, you know, in business, um, I didn't set out to be a businessman. I think if I were to help put some perspective on this whole thing, um, it was never my goal or, or anything that I wanted personally uh, to be a business owner was not uh, something my aspirations were, or even to be in this industry that I'm in. Uh, growing up, I was always going to try and be a doctor. Uh, that was the dream, the vision that I had for myself because I was pretty good at the school thing. Uh, it just clicked with me. And so I was a math science guy. Uh, my dad majored in math. And so I kind of had that brain, if you will. Uh, and so Growing up, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a doctor because that's what people that are good in school do. They become doctors and they make a bunch of money and they take care of their family. And I thought that's the path, right? And so I set out on this path um, to become a doctor. And so I graduate high school. I get a full ride academic scholarship to the University of Florida. Uh, I am, is it okay if I do a little storytelling first? Okay, cool. Um, and so I go to the University of Florida on a full ride academic scholarship and I, I'm in their pre-med program. There's Ronnie Jackson, everyone. You can't creep in, Ronnie. That's another man of God in business right here in the Atlanta area. Um, we could talk about him later, but he's a great man of God in his own right. And so I'm at the University of Florida. I get through the pre-med program. I graduate with honors, and now it's time to go to med school, and then life happens. And so has life ever happened for anybody in here? and it got in the way of your vision and your plans? Do you know that sometimes that's God? Yeah, okay. Because sometimes we have our vision, but then there's God's vision, right? And a lot of times we have our own vision for what our life should look like. And so I had my own vision. And my vision was, I'm gonna go to med school, I'm gonna become a doctor, and I'm gonna get rich, right? And so life happens. I have family members, multiple family members that get sick, one of them is my mom, my grandmother. I go back. I leave Gainesville instead of taking the next step and going straight into med school. And I come home to take care of family. And so while I'm home, uh, time passes and I kind of realize, okay, maybe I'm not going back to med school. I don't know. But what I did know is, is I had to have a job. 
uh, and because I needed to pay some bills. <laughs> and so I got a job as a school teacher uh, in town. Uh, I didn't go to school to be a school teacher. I didn't even have a teaching degree. But at the time, there was such a shortage for school teachers, they were literally hiring anybody who had enough credit hours in a certain subject area. And so obviously with my background, pre-med, I had enough credit hours in math and science where they allowed me to teach all the way up through the 12th grade in math or science. And so that's what I did for a while. Um, until one day I get a call and it's my cousin, Michael, and he's like, hey man, have you ever looked into this EP stuff? And I'm like, what's that? He's like, executive protection. And I'm like, no, not at all. I'm teaching. And, and I was very fond of the $28,000 a year salary I was making. <laughs> that, but where they hooked me, the hook was there's an $800 signing bonus. And so they got me. And so anyway, I'm teaching, which by the way, I loved teaching. Okay. And again, part of God's plan that we'll get to, right? But that teaching piece is important because I fell in love with it. I actually really enjoyed doing it. And then my cousin Mike was like, uh, you know, would, would you be interested in this? I'm like, I don't, maybe he's like, tells me what they make. I'm like, I'm interested now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. And so long story short, it's a longer story, but I'm going to shorten it. I end up being on the protection team for Pastor Benny Hinn for about a decade. And so again, God keeps intervening, right? And so I'm there and to be quite frank, um, I'm working on a team that had guys from FBI, former Navy SEALs, U.S. Marshals, uh, every type of background you could think of that I did not have. Point I'm trying to make is I didn't belong on that team. I had no business being on that team. The Lord put me on that team because he was preparing me for something. Okay, and now these guys had various types of backgrounds, various types of skill sets, various types of training, all of which I did not have. And to be quite frank, they were good guys, right? Uh, they were good guys that um, had each other's backs, took care of each other. Um, but the truth is, uh, especially in that industry and a lot of those backgrounds, they just didn't have Jesus, right? And so we were kind of talking about it today at lunch. We can remember being in the world at a time, but still doing good things, right? Does that make sense? Being good people, if you will, but not the same as having Jesus, right? And so I was starting to see, okay, I think the Lord's exposing me to what his vision is for my life. Right, And so I'm there, and while I'm there is when he gives me the idea for this thing called ESS Global Corporation. And what that is, that's the company that I run now, that, that I own, and uh, we're in our 13th year, I think, 12th or 13th year now. But he gives me this idea um, while I'm still there, and that vision of mine of being a doctor's in the rear view mirror now, right? And so, um, of course, that vision came about by me never consulting God, right? I never really asked him, hey, Lord, what's your vision for my life? I asked myself, right? Hey, man, what do you want to do with your life, right? And so, um, <clears throat> Now I'm faced with a tough decision because now I've been there 10 years. I'm actually making good money. I've got a company car. I've got a corporate apartment that's being paid for uh, by them. I'm making six figures and I'm comfortable, right? And so when you get comfortable, man, your eyesight can get bad sometimes, right? And so can your hearing if you're not intentional about being with the one who can really set your vision, right? Okay, and so I get the idea, and now the struggle is, do I leave this, what I have, and step out into this? Lord, are you sure? <laughs> you know, I already spent 20 years, no, 22 years, trying to get into med school, 
I did all the stuff. I did all the work. I passed all the tests. Got out with honors. And now you've put me into this. And now you're saying I got to leave this now? What is happening? Okay. And by this time now, I've met my wife-to-be. I know she's my wife. And so I'm thinking, of course, comfortable job, good salary, all the benefits, or step into this thing called ESS Global that has zero clients, zero students, zero income. Man, that sounds like fun. (laughs) That sound good? Can I just give a shout out to my online people? How we doing, guys? I forget sometimes, you know? And so anyway, I've got to make this decision. It's not a real, doesn't seem like a real fun one to have to, and I'm just like, you know, okay. Now, at the same time, literally, at one of Pastor Benny's services, he literally calls me up during a service, and there's a gentleman there who gives a prophetic word over me and says, hey, that thing that you're thinking about that you're supposed to do, you're supposed to do it, man, go do it. Okay. Now, you would think the next day I'm at ESS Global, right? Okay, but the struggle. And so what do I do? And so long story short, I chose ESS, right? And so it was tough. And so I, I'm not, I would never begin, I wouldn't stand up here and lie to you and tell you it was easy, right? Doing the right thing is not always easy. And by the way, it's not always meant to be easy. Uh, it's a process that the Lord puts us through to refine us, right? And to get us ready for what's to come uh, because there's always things to come. And so... Um, you know, I got to think about things. How do I support this lady I'm marrying now? Um, and so ESS, in year one, the whole company made a, a whopping $48,000. Now, that's gross. That doesn't mean Theo made $48,000. What that means is, is now I got to pay employees. I've got to pay bills. I've got to pay rent. I've got to pay everything else that comes out of that $48,000 which left Theo about $12,000, year one. All right. (laughs) So I remember telling my wife, said, sorry. It always gets a little emotional. But I remember telling my wife, I said, baby, if you'll give me three years, I'm going to figure this thing out. (laughs) I'm going to get us to a place uh, where we're going to be all right, okay? And I remember, I remember that year one, I remember my mother-in-law and father-in-law, they, they did these Sunday dinners because they wanted the whole family there. And so I had a brother and sister-in-law and then another sister-in-law. And so it was bringing the family together for Sunday dinner. And I remember, man, in those first, that first year, maybe second year, I was like, I said, baby, we can't go to dinner. We ain't got the gas money. And so you can imagine, it's a very tough thing for a man to have to tell his wife, right? But I had realized, in hindsight, of course, Hindsight's always 2020, right? I saw now why I ended up at Pastor Benny's. I saw now why I was having the interaction with those guys. And I saw now why I was opening up ESS. It was, it was the plan of God on my life that I was going to impact an industry that has very little Jesus. And I say that with humility, Okay because I'm not the only one that's doing it. There's a Ronnie Jackson that's doing it right here in your area. He was trying to expose me at that time to his vision for my life. And while I didn't understand it at first, all I knew was 
I got to be able to hear his voice. Because if I can't hear his voice, I'm not going to know where to go. And I'm never going to know if I'm making the right decision. And so if I were to ask you guys even, you know, why are you here? Why are you at this school? Why would God send you specifically here? I would tell you he's probably trying to expose you to the vision that he has for your life. He's not... And then what I, let me say this, make certain you've not already chosen the vision for your life like I did. Because what happens is, is all you're doing is wasting time. And I did that. And so I know why you're here because I know this guy and I know his family and I know the people that he brings in here. And these are presence people, man. These are people that are about intimacy. These are people that go after the heart of Jesus. Why? Because that's the place, the only place where revelation takes place. That's the only place where you can hear from the Lord. You can't begin to know what somebody wants from you, begin to know somebody unless you spend time with them. But I'm talking about intimacy. You know, presence, there's there's no word in the Hebrew for presence. The word is face. Because it's gotta be, it's gotta be this. It's face to face. It's FaceTime with the Lord. That's how you figure out what the vision is that He has for your life. And so if you're not doing this. If you're not laying your head on his chest, it's very, very difficult to understand what he wants you to do. A lot of people do what you're doing because they're seeking something else, right? Could be a pulpit, could be an opportunity, could be speaking engagements, whatever it is. And that stuff may come. I, I thought that stuff at once. I can literally remember being at a conference, standing on that side of the stage, watching these super powerful men of God up on stage and saying to the Lord, Lord, I want to be like them. And he immediately checked me and said, I don't need you to be like them. I need you to be the man I called you to be. I need you to be the man I created you to be to fulfill the purpose for which I created you for. I've already got them. They're good to go. I need you. And so he needs y'all. He needs you to be the people that he called you to be. I mean, no disrespect because I love him, but he don't need another Brian Guerin. He's already got him. You don't need another Michael Coulianos. He's already got him. He needs you and you and you and you and you and you because that's how we overtake the world for the kingdom, right? Okay, and so you've got to walk in that purpose, but you can't do it unless you're here with him so he can tell you what it is. You're out there trying to figure it out. You're even doing stuff in hopes to figure it out, but all it takes to figure it out is this, not the toil, Okay, and so requires intimacy, requires presence. Do not start the work until you've done this. In business, we have something that's called a mission statement, a vision statement. Vision statement is where we're trying to go, right? The mission statement is how we're getting there. A lot of us are already doing the mission without the vision. And missions without vision is called wandering. You ain't going nowhere. How do I know that? Because you don't have a destination. If you don't have a destination affirmed by God, everything you're doing is going nowhere. 
Does that make sense? You're wasting time. You're wasting efforts. You're wasting the gifts he gave you. And so, you don't want to wander. (laughs) Get with God. Figure out the vision. He'll tell you what it is. But God likes to talk up close. How many of you got an iPhone? You like that FaceTime? This is the best FaceTime there is, man. Connection's always there if you want it to be. Call never fails. And the information that comes across is truth. And so FaceTime with him. How often? As often as you can. He'll let you know. He'll let you know. Receive the vision by getting face to face. Now your missions have a purpose. It's a big difference. Missions without vision have no purpose. Get the vision first, and now your missions have purpose. Why? Because you're actually heading to a destination. You're actually going to a place that God has told you to go. Before we're wandering, now we're actually moving to a place. But some of us have our own vision. We didn't consult God. Sometimes we've been told by others. Can't nobody tell you but God. Your parents can't tell you. Your mentor can't tell you. Your pastor can't tell you. Only God can tell you. And so you got to get with him. That's why you guys are here is because I know that these guys are some of the best at tapping into presence. And so if you can tap into that, the rest of it becomes easy. That's where it all begins. That's where it all starts. Everything, all the answers that you're looking for take place right there with God, right there in his presence. I'm going to say something. Please don't get mad at me. How many of you know that not everybody in this room is called to the pulpit? Oh, Theo, don't you speak that on us. I'm not speaking nothing on you. I'm just being real. I wasn't called to the pulpit. I was called to the marketplace. I'm not speaking anything bad. I'm just trying to say, guess what? We need you in the marketplace. Can you imagine what we could accomplish for the kingdom if we took over the marketplace? Sometimes, a lot of times, his plan for us is way different than our plan for ourselves. And so, even though you're not called to the pulpit, you're still called to ministry, right? I may not have been called to a pulpit, but I'm still called to ministry. My ministry is called ESS Global Corporation. That's my ministry. And so, we're all given gifts. And what we do with those gifts is either going to be bring glory to God to further his kingdoms, right? Uh, Not necessarily always used within the four walls of a church. The strong majority of people in the kingdom will use their gifts outside of these walls. Now, we're all going to be given a platform in one way or another. I've got a platform at my business, Some people manage a restaurant. They have a platform there, okay? Some people are sports stars. And at at the end of the day, the Lord's gonna wanna know, what'd you do with those gifts I gave you? What'd you do with that platform? What'd you use it for? And so could you imagine, could you imagine if I had the basketball skills of a LeBron James? 
or one of you had the basketball skills of LeBron James, what we could do for the kingdom with that platform? How about an Oprah Winfrey type platform? Millions of congregants in her church. Okay. Bakery shop owner, school teacher. We all have a platform and we all have these gifts. Sometimes though, we're trying to use them for something that's not our vision or we're picking up something that's not ours. Some of us are trying to pick this up and it's not ours. And so you got all these efforts, all this work into trying to get to this and that's the mission with no vision. You're trying to start a church. You've been trying to start a church for so long. Nothing's happening. You can't figure out why because you haven't even consulted the Lord. Lord, am I supposed to have a church? Or am I supposed to run this security company? How many of you know that 50% of the churches in this country have less than 100 congregants? 40% have between 100 and 350. That means 90% of all churches have less than 350 people. I have 180 active employees right now with hundreds, if not thousands of students that will come through my school this year. I will have more ministry opportunities than 90% of all pastors this year. Is the marketplace a weak place to be for the kingdom? It's not a downgrade. It's not a slight when the Lord tells you, hey, I need you in the marketplace. It's actually an honor. We're trying to take over a place where there's very little Jesus. No disrespect to pastors with what I'm about to say, but pastors are preaching to people that are actually seeking Jesus. In the marketplace, you're preaching to people that are running from them. How much more does the Lord have to trust you and have the right people in the marketplace? Now, it's not easy, but it's an honor. Some people think, well, I'm not the chosen of God. Why? Because you weren't given a church? because you weren't given a traveling evangelistic ministry, you're the chosen of God. He's just chosen you to use the gifts he gave you here. Because every person that comes through this thing now is an opportunity. It's a soul that we can win for the Lord. It's somebody that's already saved, that's going through something. Could you imagine if we won over the marketplace Could you imagine the world's money being controlled by men and women of God? What would happen to the kingdom then? And so I say this because I know you might have a vision of what you'd like to do. Just be vulnerable enough to hear something else from him. And so... We have guys that come through our place that obviously have very little frame of reference for Jesus, okay? This this point is why we're so needed in the marketplace because They have very little exposure to Jesus or the gospel, which is also why we have to have it right in the marketplace. Because their only frame of reference, the only exposure that they have to Jesus Christ and the gospel is what they see in us. I say that with humility, not because I'm, I say it because it's fact, because they ain't in church. They don't have Bibles. 
the only thing that they are exposed to in their lives at that moment outside of a miraculous touch from God is you. When they walk into your store, when they walk into your place of business, when they walk into your restaurant, it has to be right. And so that is why we are so, I don't know the word I'm looking for, so uh, bent on no compromise. Can't have it. You can't have compromise with the people that don't know Jesus because then they begin to think that that compromise is Jesus, right? Can you pay me under the table? It's only 15 bucks. No, I cannot. It's against the law. Can you do this? Can you do that? No, we can't do it. And so at our company, to help us with this, we came up at ESS Global, what's called the line in the sand. We literally sat in a room with a big whiteboard on the wall, drew a line through the middle of that whiteboard, and we came up with every potential controversial client, job, whatever that might come across our desk and then figure out, are we going to do it? Will we not do it? Are we going to attach our name to that thing? Because here's the thing about being out in the marketplace, out in the world, trying to live out Jesus, is whatever you attach yourself to, you are making a public declaration to the world that I am in line with that. Does that make sense? Okay. So there's, quite frankly, just some clients ESS Global doesn't take. There's some jobs ESS Global doesn't take because we are not going to make the public declaration that we are in line with that. Why? I have 180 congregants on a daily basis that are looking to us saying, what's this Jesus look like you're talking about? We have to live the gospel. We don't got a choice. Too many people looking because they're not in church. They're not reading the word of God. We're trying to take them to that place, right? But until we get them there, they're looking to us. And so you got to give them the Jesus that's in the Bible, okay? And so a lot of funky stuff going out there these days. All of a sudden, it's cool to cuss. It's cool to drink alcohol. It's cool to do all these things, right? Okay? Look, I'm not going to get into a biblical debate, but here's what I'll tell you. All that we do, we do it unto the glory of God. If it don't glorify God, I ain't doing it. That's the answer. Yeah, but where does it say in the Bible? No, 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 no. If it doesn't glorify God, I'm not doing it. That's Bible. Okay? And so we got this line in the sand. And so it's hard for non-believers to understand that sometime. And so when Planned Parenthood came calling, wanting us to do security for their events, Now, how many of you know that's a big money day? Those are big money days. And when we had to say, no, we can't do it. Well, now we got employees that can't understand, boss, why why on earth would you do that? We got money. We we need money, make money. We got bills to pay. And there's my ministry opportunity. Here's where I get to talk to them about Jesus. Here's where I get to tell them about the gospel and why I can't do it and how he honors that. And why in year one, we're at 48,000, but 12 years later, we're at 6.2 million. Not for anything, but it's, it's honoring the one and he honors back, man. Okay. And so we have just, just the other day, <laughs> you know, give a little testimony. We have an instructor who has worked for us for three Three years. Good dude. Former Navy corpsman who turned into a a Marine Scout sniper. Seen serious war. Has confirmed kills as a sniper. As a matter of fact, him being a sniper and actually killing somebody became a, a thing because 
On one side, he was a corpsman who was supposed to save life. And on the other side, he's a sniper who takes life. And it was a, it was a thing in the military. They were like, wait a minute, that's, the perspective's not going to be good on that. Anyway, he comes through our courses. We immediately recognize the excellence on him, on how he operates. Doesn't know Jesus. Oh, well, Theo, how could you hire a guy that doesn't love Jesus? We're called to the lost. We get that one. <laughs> how, come every, how come all 180 employees aren't um, born-again Christians? We're called to the lost. We employ some of them because we want them to be exposed to the gospel at our ministry called ESS Global Corporation. And so this dude, we've, we were like, we got to get this guy saved. And so Jason there kind of made it his mission several times. Se I say several times because it can't be several if the first ones took, right? This dude flat out denied it. <laughs> Jason said, hey, man, you ever met Jesus? No. Would you like to? No. <laughs> Another occasion. Hey, hey, bro, what do you think, man? I mean, you ready now? Or Man, I really appreciate what you're doing, but now I'm good. And so we're like, all right, this, this, this is a little harder than we thought. But we didn't give up. And so the other day he walks in and this dude is rattled. I mean, Jason describes it as if you ever seen a, the water pot that you put on the burner to boil the water just before it's ready to blow, man, it can even shake. That's how this guy looked when he walked in our office. And so... The night before, another guy in our office, Jake, ministered to this guy for like an hour or two. And he's like, bro, I got so close. He's like, it's coming. Very next day, Jason just turns and says, hey, man, you know you ain't got to do this on your own. There's a guy that will walk through all of it with you and for darn sure bring you out on the other side. It's not even a question. He goes, but it ain't me. And so Jason starts talking to him and says, are you ready, man? And he's like, I am. And so it was so epic, I had to pull my camera out because I was like, ain't nobody gonna believe this. We got denied so many times. <laughs> and so Jason's like, look, man, as you feel led, just repeat after me. And Jason said like the first line of the prayer and crickets, we didn't hear nothing back. And we're like, no, nah, Lord, come on. We got so close, don't even. And so Jason rolls his chair, <laughs> gets right up on the guy. Hey, man, in case you didn't hear me. <laughs> but he said it, man, and we got this guy saved right there and then in our office. Yeah, glory to God. And so here's the deal. That would never happen in a church right? That could have only happened in the marketplace because this guy was never going to be found in the church. And so I say that because for some of you that the Lord has already begun to put it on your heart that you're supposed to be out in the marketplace, don't take that as a slight. Don't take that as a downgrade or a demotion. That is an honor. There are people out there that need Jesus that you are never going to see in here until we go out there and get them, man. And we got to get them. And so that was a big win for us. And so we've had several people that literally out in, the, I mean, Jason's <laughs> saving guys literally out in the field on job sites, you know? And so those opportunities could only happen uh, by way of the marketplace, which could have only happened by way of me receiving the vision from the Lord and then being willing to walk that thing out. <clears throat> and so I encourage you guys, if you haven't done it, get with the Lord and find out maybe this is not the call. Okay. Now I, I enjoy this. I love this. Uh, and, and have I ministered in the church? Yeah, I have. But my call was to the marketplace. Okay. And so this can come, but it's not a, it takes a special, I say this with humility, uh, it takes special, strong people out there in the world to do it. And some of you are right here in this room, okay? 
And so, there's much to do in the marketplace. Much, much, much to do. It's not over till we have it all, and we can have it all. There's no reason we can't have it all. It's the kingdom. So, you get the vision. That's first. Next step is, Lord, where are the missions? What are the God-given steps that are required to live this thing out that you have called me to? How do I do it, Lord? He will lay out the plan. He will be very clear. And a very, I would say, mission critical part of that is having the right people around you. Same thing in ministry. It is ministry. You got to have the right people around you. Having the wrong people around you is just as important as having the right people. The wrong people can't be there. You got to pray the right people in. You have a soul that is a sponge. And it's a battle. It's in the middle of a battle between the flesh and the spirit. And what you give ear to is important. And what you are allowing people to speak into your ear is important. Oh, man, I'm, I'm so grounded. Can't nothing. Uh, don't lie to yourself. When you wallow with pigs, okay? You got to have the right people. Sphere of influence. Super important. You have to have people around, because I'm going to tell you right now, (laughs) these missions aren't easy. You know that, right? We're trying to take humanity for the kingdom. You understand? These missions aren't easy. You got to have people around you that, man, when you're weary, they're going to hold your arms up. You understand? You got to have people that are going to encourage, that are going to edify, that are going to strengthen, but at the same time, love you enough to correct and keep you accountable. That's a big part that's missing today. Everybody wants the the ones that will edify, strengthen, and encourage Nobody wants the ones that correct and keep you accountable. That's why we have a lot of problems these days. Because we're not open enough to hear from the ones that love us enough to come to us. Or we don't love enough to actually have that awkward conversation. (laughs) These guys... Got to know I love them enough to come to them, and I got to know it too. Because guess what? As much as they say it, I am not perfect. I'm not. That was a joke. <laughs> Seeing if y'all caught it, okay? But I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. Sometimes I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a bad day, believe it or not. Sometimes the enemy has a target on my back, and I need my boys. Okay? But we got to love each other enough to come to each other and say, hey, man, you're missing it today. And I got to love them enough to say, how? Help me through this. And so you got to have the right people around. What you don't need is yes men. Right? That ain't love. I'm watching you walk down a destructive path and I don't say nothing about it. Because of what? Fear? Fear? Fear that it's going to ruin the relationship? Well, then we didn't have a relationship to begin with. But I got to love you enough to say, hey, man, you're missing it. And I got to be loving you enough to say, well, then show me, man. Help me get through this. And so the right people. And so, yes, we do hire people that don't know Jesus yet because we're trying to call in the lost. But I'll tell you, the head shed are all Jesus-fearing, Jesus-loving people. That 
understand the vision. Okay? They know what we're after. When I hired my staff in the office, not a one of them, not one had any experience in the security or protection field. I've got an operations manager who's a pastor and a real estate agent, real estate broker. I've got a CFO who was in marketing and is a minister to the youth at his church. I've got an office manager who is my mother-in-law, who is a Jesus lover. I've got a guy who runs our social media, who is an ordained pastor or minister. And I've got another pastor who runs all of our video stuff and all that. Why? Because spirit understands spirit. And sometimes we've got to make decisions in that office that the world can't grab onto because they don't understand it. Does that make sense? And so, yeah, it's the marketplace, but God, don't be fooled. We're led by the spirit. And every decision is spirit-based. It has to be. Why? Because this whole thing's about kingdom. What are we trying to win it for? We're not trying to win it for personal gain. We're trying to win it for the kingdom. Okay, and so got to have spirit-driven people in that office to go after kingdom stuff. And so these people help you get through the missions because the missions aren't easy, okay? You hope that you live this thing out in such a way that it's impacting lives, right? And so people are looking at it and they can't figure out how are you guys doing this? My, my wife says to us, because she knows what goes down behind the scenes, and, and we're goofballs, man. I'm going to be honest with you. We laugh. We joke around. We, uh, a big portion of our day is centered around food. We're trying to figure out what's for lunch, and then what's between lunch, what's before lunch. Okay, and so, and we're joking around. As a matter of fact, me and Jason hung out so much just to work out and eat lunches before I hired him that we're like, bro, we should just work together. Our wives can't complain because we're catching a lot of heat. You guys are always hanging out with each other. How are you getting any work done? You know what? You're gonna come work for me, man. <laughs> now they can't say nothing. But Jason, when I hired Jason, okay, I says, bro, you want to come work for me? He's like, to do what? He's like, I, I don't know security. I says, man, I need you to pastor my people. <laughs> yeah. I said, and I know you can do that. I've seen you do that. Because the people are your company, right? And so they need pastoring. And so you have to be able to impact these people. You got to live this thing in such a way where people are looking at it, they're attracted to the one who's behind it, not Theo, right? And man, how's this working? Because my wife is like, I, she goes, I, I know that ESS is the biggest testimony that God exists because I, I don't know how you guys are making money. She's like, it's gotta be God. She's like, because all y'all do is cut loose all day long. She's like, this has to be God. And so, but my point is, People got to look at it and say, man, I want that, right? We've had people come into our office and they're like, hey, I don't know what's going on here, man. But, you know, these are military dudes and they're, and they're like, we're attracted to this company. We just want to be around. We've got employees that show up. They just want to hang out. We literally had to create an employee lounge because we couldn't get no work done. They're coming and hanging out in the office all day. And, and we're, we're sitting there like, uh, bro, what's he doing here? I don't know. Is he staying long? I don't know. When's he leaving? I don't know. And meanwhile, we've got sensitive, like we've got our big screens up that have our P&Ls and our, our invoices and, and number. And I'm like, 
Jason, turn off that TV, turn off the other. And so, but they wanted to be around. They were attracted to something. They weren't attracted to us. They're attracted to what's in us, the one that's in us. And the one who was over that company, over that ministry. And so Mr. Ronnie Jackson there, I'll never forget. I don't know if you remember, but I remember when he came, he said, man, Ronnie already had a company. He's already doing work, doing big things up in here in the Atlanta area. And he says, hey, man, I want to learn the business. Now, to me, I was like, cool. <laughs> I'm trying to learn it myself. <laughs> but he wanted to learn the business and learn it from a people that were doing it in a way that lined up with the word of God, which number one was humbling for us. And number two, most people would say, that's my competition. I can't build him up. I can't help him to get his thing off the ground because now I'm giving another security company my secrets. The world would say that. But see, we are trying to take over the marketplace for the kingdom and we need a thousand Ronnie Jacksons, right? And so it ain't about ESS. Our perspective, our viewpoint's gonna always be different than the world's. Day one, when they come to our academy, they're with us for 45 days. I said, what are y'all trying to do? We want to become agents. Great. That's a terrible vision. Go back to God. All you guys should be aspiring to company owner, not just agent. My friends in the industry are like, why do you do that, man? You're creating more competition for all of us. I'm not going after the same thing you are. You're going after money. I'm going after the kingdom, man. And so we're not after the same thing. And so I'm trying to raise up, help raise up people that are going after that same thing because, man, we got a marketplace to take over for God. Can't do it by myself. He can't do it by himself. And so we got to lock arms. And so I'm in Tampa and he's in Atlanta and we got to find people in between us and we got to find people next to us. We got to take this whole thing over. And so, I don't even know where I was, but um, you got to have the right people around you. Mission critical. And then lastly, I, I'll just, I'll end with this. You got to be a giver, man. I learned, so the Lord really tested me on this. I've, I've always gave. I've always tithed, right? And at a time, I thought that was a big deal. I'm tithing, and really all I'm doing is giving somebody else back something that was his, not mine to begin with. And I thought that was something, right? But he stretched, he stretched us at a time when he'll stretch you, when you ain't in a place where you want to be stretched because you feel like anything else and I'm, it's going to pop, right? And it's funny because the other day I was going through our files at the office because I hate clutter. And when you own a business for over a decade, you start to collect clutter. Most of it's paperwork. And so you're trying to put stuff in the file cabinet and you're shoving it down because there's no room. And I'm like, what's happening in here? So I'm like, I'm going to go through the files come across this old Bank of America folder. It was from when we started the company and it was how much money we had when we started the company. $100. $100 is what that company started with. Now, That was the time <laughs> when the Lord said, I'm going to stretch you now. <laughs> and so when you only got $100 in the account, any amount of money is a lot. And so I can remember, because I really wanted to, 
you can move the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And, and you can, I'm not trying to get into a giving. I'm just trying to give you testimony. Okay. And so people say, Theo, what worked for you? A big part of that was giving. And so, yeah, we tithed, but now we wanted to give out of our portion because that's where sacrifice takes place. You can't sacrifice something that's not yours, right? And the tithe was never yours to begin with. So you can't say, man, I sacrificed. I gave my tithe. No, you didn't. That'd be like if I gave you money to hold and then I came back to you and said, give my money back. You didn't sacrifice. Sacrifice is coming out of your portion. And so I'll never forget it. Lord spoke to me and my wife different times. He gave us the same number. He says, I want you to give this guy in your church $1,000. I said, come again, Lord. You're talking to Theo. You remember? $1,000. I asked my wife, I said, baby, did he put anything on your heart? Yeah, $1,000, babe. I'm like, oh, are you sure? <laughs> now, here's the odd part. The person he said to give it to is a rich guy. Millionaire, I believe. Give that guy a thousand bucks. So I'm the poor guy giving the millionaire a thousand dollars and I'm, Lord, what are, we, what are we doing here? But nevertheless, we wrote the check. That check stretched us. And I remember walking up to the guy. You're supposed to be a cheerful giver. I know. <laughs> but if I told you it was completely cheerful in that moment... I walked up, I shook his hand. The Lord told me to do this and I don't know why. Those are my words. <laughs> the Lord told me to do this and I don't know why. And so the Lord had shown me why later. It wasn't even about me. It was, it was actually about him and his giving. Because I got a text from him later that day, a novel talking about how in his entire life, Nobody had ever given him something like that. And the Lord was using that to break open his giving. The, the, the yes is always important, but so is the timing. Part of obedience is timing. You know that, right? Lord asks you to do something. Yeah, Lord, I'll do it when I can. Give $1,000. Okay, cool. Let me go make $1,000 first. No, that's not what he said. You know, when he asks you to do something, he's talking about now. And so the now is not always easy because in our minds, we're not in a position to do it, right? But man, he's, he's the ultimate chess player, man. I don't know that this $1,000 is going to unlock something in this guy that's going to send hundreds of thousands into the kingdom. But had I said no, we don't know even to this day what that guy is doing. And so the yes is important. And so when the Lord brings an opportunity to, and this is not just in giving, it's in all that we do. When he brings an opportunity, we, we give the yes and then we act, right? Here, act. Here, act. I, I got invited to California one time to speak at this human trafficking event. And so part of it was that you, you went into these breakout sessions because they're actually coming up with plans to pull these kids out of there that are being trafficked. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I obviously know why I'm here. I have a lot of connections. I know people that can actually go do the physical work. So they assign you to your breakout room. You go to the breakout room and I'm not in the tactical room. I'm in the business room with the people that are there for their business mindset. And I, I'm gonna let you know on a secret. I don't have a business mindset. Um, some of my, my, my guys do, you know, and they throw all these, I'm sitting in the room and they're throwing out their stories and their all the acronyms, the ROIs and the KPIs and the TGIs and the CPSs and the, I, I don't know this stuff. I still don't know it. And they come to me and they're like, what's your plan, man? What do you do? I says, man, I just listen to God. 
I don't know how to do it any other way because I definitely don't understand that stuff. And so I listen and then we do. And so having the right people too is important in listening. Because sometimes, hey man, are we all hearing the same thing here? Cool, let's, let's go. Okay? Or sometimes you hear it and now you're hesitant on the timing piece and they're there to push you. Let's go. The Lord said it, let's go. And so it has been a, a very rewarding uh, an interesting ride, so to speak. Um, we have had the opportunity uh, to really affect a lot of lives through business. Um, again, I never, ever, ever thought that business was going to be my thing. I, I still don't understand a lot of it. I'm just going to be honest. Like that stuff, I understand security. I understand protection. It's what I've done for 20 some years. But I don't necessarily understand that stuff. I just know now because I could actually get with him and listen. Oh, this is why you got me here. And this is what we're going after. And so I by no means come here to tell you that, I, I mean, couldn't do it without these guys. Couldn't do it without a Jason. Couldn't do it without my mother-in-law. Couldn't do it without Jake, Jeff, Harry, Theo. All the guys that are committed to carrying out this vision. And so I want to tell you, Yes, I know, many of you, it's been a dream. You've hoped that this is the call for you. And for some of you, it may be. But for some of you, it may not be. And better that you find out tonight. How many of you know you can find out tonight? Yeah. Find out tonight because what you were called for is still waiting on you. And if you don't answer that call, it's not getting done. Well, when do we need it done? Right now. The enemy doesn't stop working, right? And so we need you now doing what you were called to do. So that's my prayer for you guys. That's my prayer for you guys. And even coming to this school is that your desire is to be so intimate with the Lord and have a hunger for his presence that his voice is crystal clear. And it can be crystal clear. And so let's pray. Lord, Lord, I thank you for your saints, Lord. And Lord, while I don't know the vision that you have for each of them, I know you do. And so even right now, Lord, as they seek your face, my God, I pray that they would lay down their vision and pick yours up. Speak into their hearts now, Lord. Show them clearly, Lord, tonight, over the next few days, Lord, what it is that you want them to do with their lives, my God. Lord, I pray for supernatural, divine appointments with people in their sphere of influence, Lord, that will help that vision, that help with the missions, my God. I thank you for supernatural influence in their lives, Lord. I thank you for favor that goes before them, Lord. Lord, it says that your favor encompasses us like a shield. I thank you for that encompassing, Lord, that no matter what direction the enemy comes from, we got favor. And I thank you that even now, as the weapons are being formed, they can't prosper. They simply can't. Because we have you, my God. <laughs> and so, Lord, I pray tonight, just as you did with me, that you would raise up men and women of God that would help to take the marketplace over for the kingdom of God, Lord. I thank you that the world's money will be used to better the kingdom of God, Lord. I thank you that even now, Lord, people are being touched, Lord, People are being spoken to, my God, and that your destiny for them is crystal clear, Lord. Lord, if you did it for me, you can do it for them, and I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, 
that you allow us to lay our head on your chest, Lord, that we all have access, Lord, because we are the beloved. And so, Lord, open up our ears, open up our eyes, my God. We thank you for your voice. Holy Spirit, we don't ever want to try to do this without you. I've tried. It doesn't work. Thank you for never giving up on us, Lord. So, Lord, we bless you. We bless you. And we love you so much, my God. In Jesus' name, amen.